Okay, BookTube, let's try this video again. I sat here for about 10 minutes and I realized it wasn't recording. I pushed the record button, so let's see how this goes. Anyway, yesterday at 20, well, by the time this goes up, um, it's not yesterday for me. It's just I finished one and done the other, uh, or recording this. Uh, uh, but I'm going to uh, schedule them on different days. But they're sort of similar. I've, I've put down, uh, like, well, last, yesterday's is uh, end notes, footnotes, or no notes. You know, question mark, and discuss that, and annotation, and stuff like that. But also, I figured, well, I didn't, I didn't address in that one um, self-annotation. I don't quite like calling it annotation, but putting your own notes in it. So I, but I am willing to accept that it is an annotation, but but again, I think it has to be qualified. It's not annotation like, like you know, that are printed in books that give you all this inf extra information. You know, you might add stuff, but it it usually be personal information for you. So it's it's not sort of more for wider use. So to me, annotation is. But then again, it is a definition of the word. You're annotating it, so fine. I don't want uh, I don't want any hate. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, but yeah, so it's sort of that, but also extending from that is writing in a book. Um, and this, again, this the thought for this it came out of uh, the end notes one or footnotes or no notes. Uh, but also, it, it the, the the germ of this sort of is is a culmination of a lot of videos about reading the perfect book and you know or the tag uh, the perfect book and all that kind of thing. And also specifically alive that at the time I'm recording this was yesterday that Mark and I did that the idea came up about uh, you know a few th not so much th these ideas but something came up that made me think of X Y and Z which you know and then connected all these spurious dots uh, that are in the uh, uh, BookTube universe uh, recently that I've been watching. And uh, this one is sort of writing because, um, again, uh, memory is, is faulty. Uh, somebody mentioned that looking for Shakespeare, they can never use, they can never find a uh, one that wasn't highlighted uh, with highlighter, underlined, and pen or whatever. Just absolutely, you know, trash. And the question is, do you write in your books and why? And is there any specific reasons? I'll go through sort of my thoughts on these, how I feel about it. Um, I always never did. I never write like writing a book. I never wrote my own name. I never put a, a book plate in or anything like that. Um, I don't like generally writing in a book. Even somebody... Uh, okay. A new book, and I mean something published in the last 40 or 50, say 50 years or 60 years. In my lifetime, I guess. That's why I'm thinking as, as new. Um, I don't like people's names in them. Especially in pen. Pencil is fine because if I do decide to erase it, I can. Or they could have. Uh, I don't really care for pen. But then, a yeah, 150-year-old book, it's really neat to see, you know... Uh, given to so and so for a birthday gift, a Christmas gift, and, and the year. And sometimes it's the same publication year. And sometimes there's a little loving inscription in it, which is which is really cool. And then later, like a hundred years after that, you'll get somebody else with another inscription in with the date. And sometimes it could be something like during the Second World War. Like I do have books like that, which I find interesting. Uh, but today i don't find it interesting however i am aware that in 150 years hence these things will become interesting but and i understand that um contradiction uh that i have uh but i do and partially the reason why uh, i think a big part of this is when people put their own names in it now everybody's conscious about oh i don't want my name known Hence, like on the internet, nobody, hardly anybody uses their their, their real name for their for their um, uh, screen name or channel name. Uh, you know, I've used my real name, but you know, and there are pitfalls for that, and I do understand that. And having somebody's name in it or their address, especially in a book, because people used to 
uh, have addresses in. But that was never, well, I'm sure it was a problem, but it was never consciously, uh, a, a, like as a group, a problem in the past. So people did. Like even, even in magazines, people's addresses, like I mean actual addresses, when they wrote in to say science fiction magazines in the 30s and 40s, their name and their full address, their street address, would be put, uh, written down there. So, so somebody else could could write to them, you know, and become pen pals or hate mail. And I'm sure there were hate mail uh, from this, uh, but a lot of the correspondents got actual letters from authors. So that's that's the plus side of it, you know. But today, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if you'd want to give your full uh, disclose your full address, you know. Uh, there, there, there can be a little more chances are to be more pitfall than 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 good but anyway because of that people if they have put their name in or especially if they have put their address in when they go to sell the book or it gets you know after their use they'll rip the whole page out which is horrible you know i cringe when i see that or even hear it or they clip the corner of the, the name or something like that or rip it up even worse is ripping it out the corner where the, where the name is or the part of the page that is is horrible to me uh and how, how do you feel about that that that's the other question is too uh, that those kind of things but let's let, let's get to writing in the book or, or the, like i say i never did before but since my um illness the heart attack and the COVID. I don't know. A lot of things had changed with me, as I guess they normally would. But this kind of thing has changed. I am willing, and I have done, on occasion, written in a book or made a few notes on the side or my thoughts or, you know, underlined or um, circled something and put a line in and then a little note. The first book that I did this in was that I read The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty, uh, uh, with two other booktubers. I won't get into whether I like the book or not. That's that's immaterial for this uh, discussion. Uh, but I, uh, the reason why I did this was there, there's two versions of it. There is the original version that he wrote, what is it, 1973? Or maybe earlier. Anyway, the original version. And then 40 years later or 30 years later, he revised it. He made changes and he added a scene. So I, I had both, you know, I, I purposely searched out both editions, paperback. I read a chapter in the original and then reread that chapter in the, um, in the, um, in the revised edition. And mostly in the revised edition, I made the notes saying, oh, the, you changed this word from this. These lines are not in the original or... There's an additional line, and then I'd go back to the original and sort of circle that and say this is this is taken out of the second one, and then reference the page to that one and back and forth. That was sort of so we could discuss this, and because I was the one that was doing this, and I, in our Voxer group, I was I was going through these these differences, not into minutia, but I would say you know if there was few words changed, but if you know, and it didn't make any any um, change in the meaning. I just said that you know he changed several things here, minor change, didn't change it. But when it did change the meaning or the potential for the interpretation, I would I would talk about that so I could flip back and forth. But yeah, so that's that's what I did with that, and it started with uh, my reread of uh, of Walden. Walden um, was the first after illness and everything was the first nonfiction book that I had uh, attempted because of brain fog and stuff. And this is something I don't understand. I still, to this day, I'm having difficulty and this is a year and more than a year and a half after COVID uh, with my long COVID. I'm still having trouble with nonfiction, but anyway, uh, I, I, can, I can do it better than I did before. Uh, but it was, it's slow. But I decided to read because another booktuber was reading um, a Walden. and I thought, yeah, I got I got a copy here. I bought it the year before. I wanted to reread that. So I figured, well, I know that's an easy read. You know, there's nothing difficult in the language. I might be able to do this. And I did, but it was slow. It was slow going. But I wished I actually had because I had made that conscious decision to actually uh, write in it because... 
when I originally read Walden, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Uh, I didn't like the philosophy in it and everything like that. But then I spoke to somebody else. This maybe it was fairly close to the time I, I had originally read it. Maybe within a couple of years, somebody said, "Oh, but didn't you see this?" And I go, "No, I don't remember that," because everything else that I disliked overshadowed everything else. So I promptly reread it, and I sort of didn't pay too much attention to the philosophical parts, which I didn't like. And I concentrated on the parts that I did, like his descriptions of the wildlife or, you know, fauna, uh, or I should say flora more, more than fauna, uh, and then him digging in his garden, finding arrowheads and stuff like that. I really, really liked, and I liked the way he wrote that. I really, really did. So, hence, uh, rereading it the second time, I've read it several times since. So I'd wished when I was rereading it last year, I had a pencil. I didn't have a pencil. I had a pen, but I refused to do it in pen. I wanted to, you know, put a little X up in the top corner of the page, possibly bookmarks. Uh, I started putting some bookmarks in, but it just got too, too, too much. Maybe those little tabs might, might work better. I don't have any, but that might be the thing. But I, but I would underline or put an X, like a big X in the, in the, uh, in the margin of where this is and st where it starts like a circle and then a circle at the end or sometimes a little uh, a little no i wanted to do that uh, so then that i would you know if i do get the yen i could pick it up flip through and read a section that re i really like and i get a lot out of it and it makes me feel good uh so that's what i wanted to do but i didn't do that and i did it for a book that i probably will not reread again uh, which is uh, The Exorcist. Oh, well. But yeah, but the, the question, I guess, really is, that I'm leading up to this, do you write in your book, uh, books? Um, if so, what do you use? W will you use, a, will you highlight it? Will you use a pen or only one or the other? Or do you, it's verboten to you, completely forbidden, and you will not do it. And also, will you do it to any, if you do this, will you do it to any edition of the book that you, that you own or buy? Uh, see, to me, I probably would not write, even in pencil, in something, a nicer edition or what I think is a nicer edition. Because I do care about the condition of the book and the editions that I have occasionally. Sometimes it's just reading. Paperbacks are perfect. Um... I still haven't got to the aspect of of ebooks to you can put notes in uh, and stuff like that because when I'm reading in in, in the uh, it just it's too time consuming for me. But it is a cool idea to do, and apparently you can export it and then print it out if you want to. That's all those things are are cool and great, but I'm not at that point yet because it would take too long for me to do. Um, but so, but if that's the case, uh, and it's only the ebooks you do, is it for that reason? Because you don't want to do it anywhere else. Perfectly fine and understandable. Uh, but yeah, but I, I'd like to know your answers. Uh, because as I say, I, I, I'm very conscious of where I would do this and how much I would do and how I do it now. Uh, but yeah, that's that's sort of it uh, for for this. It's sort of how to. Con I guess I could end on like sort of condition uh, as well. I'm I'm curious to know what people uh, feel, because I've had I've had I've known people in the past that they'll look at your books, and if the spines are not all creased and you know the book is basically not trashed, they won't nothing nothing to do with you because uh, because they don't think you've read the books because you. In their mind, it was that you only read the book when it's when it's trashed, and there's the thing. Oh, it's been it's it's been lovingly read. Don't give me that. You know that's like bashing up somebody because you love them. You know, beating them up because oh, I love you, and that's why I'm beating you up. No, don't give me that. If if you don't care and you like the look of that, that's a different matter. You know. But, you know, uh, I don't like that. I don't like that. And because when I, unless it's a poorly made paperback, 
I will reread. I will read and reread a paperback, and you can't tell it's been read. I know it's been read, and sometimes you can tell on the front page edges because of the ink or whatever, the oils on your finger, you know, or dust. Um, you know, you can see a little grayness on the on the on the. Um, there's a book here, like on the page, you can see a little grayness there because you're you're opening up and you're holding it like this all the time with your thumb there or finger. Um, and sometimes that can be seen. It depends on how well the book has been made. And again, do you, uh, like, I guess, you know, I can understand people not taking too much care of paperbacks because the, mine do get damaged occasionally or have in the past because I've taken it on the bus or different places. And when you're shoving, you quickly have to shove it into your bag or something like that. And stuff does get damaged. Uh, I try not to, but sometimes it does. So is it sort of uh, like, do you not care about how the condition is of any book that you've got? So you pay $50 or $20 for a hardcover and you, you treat it the same way uh, as, as the paperback. Or you will only, you know, potentially do that with the paperback and keep the hardcovers, uh, you know, pristine sort of condition or whatever. And read the, read them very carefully. Um, I, I'm just curious at, at how people, and I'm sure that this, that actually could be a whole different, uh, uh, video, but I'm, I'm including it here because I, I'm not going to make three of this. So I just tack it on here because to me, the, the condition and, and the writing, uh, for the condition, uh, is, is, is a part of what I would call the condition of the book if there's writing in it. So, yeah, so it, it's that type of thing. And, uh, um, yeah. Um, I think I'll end it there. It's a little shorter than the other one. So, uh, again, just to reiterate, uh, do you, do you write, annotate, make notes, whatever you want to call it, underline, uh, in your books? And are there any specific editions of books that are, are forbidden or do you do it to all, or do you do it to none? And if you do do it, if you do do it, it always sounds funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you do write in them, uh, do you, will you use alternately pencil, pen, highlighter, um, or even, I guess with those tabs, you know, you could write, I guess, potentially things on tabs that you put in. Do you prefer to do that so you can take them off? I always be a little hesitant of those. I might start using them, but if I can get some, but I just don't like the idea of the glue on, on the paper because it might rip the paper or discolor it, uh, after time. So I don't know, but that's that's in the side, uh, or or all of the above, or only one, like you know, uh, or are you like me that you only do it certain editions and in lightly in pencil, so you can erase it if you want to, or when it goes on, uh, which it eventually will, unless you destroy the book completely, your books will eventually go on to somebody else, and do you think that they should know that this is what you did? Do they, will they care what you've did, uh, you know, uh, the writing in it? Some people like getting a book and seeing other people's annotations in it and their notes. I particularly don't. I could care less unless it's somebody I, 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 I knew. It has to be a personal connection or a writer, say, for instance. Like I mentioned uh, Virginia Woolf several times in the previous video. If you picked up a book uh, that she had read and she annotated, well, that's a different matter, <laughs> you know, or any writer like that, you know, um, it, it, it's fine. Or again, and I'll risk the urge of everybody stopping listening to the video here is Louise Brooks. And I've said this over and over that when she lived in Rochester, she got library books, memoirs of actors and actresses and about Hollywood. And she made, she wrote in them. I don't know whether they were pencil or pen. Chances are they were pen. <laughs> Uh, because the library would have erased them, I suppose, if, if it was pencil. But she would write, you know, saying, oh, that's BS, you know, that's not true, and stuff like that. See, that, to me, would be interesting. It may not be interesting to somebody else who doesn't care about Louise Brooks, but regardless, if it's somebody like that, that that is of a personality like that, and it could be a cult of personality, I don't know, I don't want to get into all that kind of thing, but it could be that. But to me, that's more interesting because I am interested in that person. Uh, just the, you know, person out on, you know, just a random person in a reader in the in the world 
I'm not particularly interested in getting a book with those with those in. I'm more interested if, you know, I, I met that person and tell me what you think about it. I don't want to read your thoughts later on. I want you to tell me what it, what your thoughts are of it. Um, just little subtlety differences there. But anyway, I'll end it there at 20 minutes. And uh, yeah, do, you know, as I said before, do write your essays down in the bottom and tell me uh, what, what your, um, uh, you know, thoughts are on these subjects about writing or annotating in books and why and why you do it or why you don't I, i'm curious anywhere any anywhere and anyway thank you booktube and i'll see you next time